Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today we find ourselves as a rookie pilot stranded in the far reaches of space on the doorstep of the enemy fleet. Now you've already been defeated, but you've been warped back and have a second chance, but now you know what's coming. Warp's Edge is a solo bag building game of space combat that additionally has a 28 page choose your path storybook and is part of the solo hero series from Renegade Game Studios. It takes 30 to 45 minutes to play for ages 10 and up. Today we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I've placed timestamps below me in the description of this video in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. Warp's Edge is a solo bag-building game of space combat. You'll be selecting from four different starfighters. You'll be selecting to defeat one of five different motherships. And in this bag-building adventure, you'll be using lasers and energy, as well as maneuvers and special power tokens, depending on the starfighter that you choose. You'll be drawing tokens from a bag and using these as actions, like deciding to stun an enemy so it won't hit you, even though you won't destroy it this turn or completely evading an enemy getting rewards. But you have to be careful because any enemy not destroyed or evaded will do damage to your shields. And if your shields ever drop to zero and then get hit again, your hull goes down. If that gets to zero, you'll lose. And not only are you taking out enemies, you're trying to take out the three sections of the mothership before all of the warps are over. And even if you don't destroy all the enemies before the warp's over, they'll come back with a vengeance. So let's see if you can manage your action, buying new tokens, and using skills to win the game. To set up, you're going to select your Starfighter. There's a couple of double-sided boards here, and typically you'll choose which one you want. Today, I'm going to have you choose Achilles. You're going to place the hull marker in the top numbered spot in the hull meter, and you're going to place the shield token in the top numbered spot in the shield meter. Off to one side, you're going to place the skill deck. It looks like this. You'll shuffle this deck, and then you're going to draw two cards from this deck. You'll select one of these cards to place face up to the left of your starfighter board. Leave some space for a token pool. If you're not sure which card to pick right now, you can wait to the end of this video, or you can just pick one that looks cooler to you. The card that you did not select goes to the bottom of that skill deck face down. We're going to start setting up the token supply. First, find the 10 tokens that have a white border. These are going to be starting tokens. Place these off to the side for now. Next, we're going to set up the token trays. In this one, you're going to find the respective tokens and place them in their spots. For example, this uh, is a laser with the number one on them. Lasers with two, lasers with three. Same for energy. Energy is one, twos, and threes. And the numbers, as you see, are on the tokens themselves. So you'll place those all here. These will be used every game. On the other tray, you'll do the same thing for the evade tokens. They're all number ones. These also will be used every game. Now, the rest of these, if you see this, it spells out power. These five sets of tokens will depend on which starfighter you chose this game. For example, here we see for P, O, W, E, and R, which tokens we'll use. So we have those corresponding tokens in each of the letters for P, O, W, E, R, and they all match. So you'll do that for the starfighter that you've chosen. And in the main game insert, you'll see the P, O, W, E, R tokens that you'll place here, the power tokens for each letter. You'll place all the other ones of those types that aren't being used this game here. Now, those white bordered tokens I told you to set aside, there's 10 of them. You're going to place them in the Warp's Edge bag. You're also going to take one of your signature power tokens. That's the yellow one. This is known as your loadout for the Starfighter. So we'll take the yellow signature token from here, add it to these as well, into the bag. Then you'll shuffle the tokens in that bag and you'll draw five and add them here to your token pool. Now note about the bag, you're not allowed to look into that bag to see what is there, but you are able to feel around and see how many tokens are left in the bag. Next, you're going to select a mothership. Normally you would just choose, there's three double-sided boards with five to choose from. In this case, I want you to select the Dread. You'll place this in the middle of the table and you'll place the warp marker on the first warp spot on the left. You'll also place these damage markers next to the mothership. Next, we're going to set up the enemy deck, and it's different for each of the motherships. And there's three levels of enemies. Level 1's yellow, level 2's orange, and level 3's reds. They're all going to be in the deck that looks like this from the back. You'll need to flip that deck over and separate them out into those three levels, yellow, orange, and red. Once you have them that way, you're going to shuffle each of these decks separately and then place them face down. 
Next, you're going to create one deck. You're going to first put three cards from the red level three deck face down. Then on top of that, you'll place four orange ones face down and then five yellow ones face down. So there's going to be five yellows. And as we go down, four orange. And as we go down further, the three red will be on the bottom on a face down deck. The rest of the enemy cards can be placed back in the box. And then we'll place that deck just below the mothership. We'll draw four cards and you'll put them in left to right just below like this. The object of the game is defeat the mothership and you have to defeat all sections of it. However, you'll lose if your final warp ends and you haven't yet destroyed the mothership. Or if your hull meter ever reaches zero, you also lose. The game is played over a series of rounds known as warps. And the number of warps that you'll be having in a game depends on the mothership that you've chosen. And each of these warps have multiple turns in it. And each turn is divided into four steps that happen in this order. The first one is enemy arrivals. Now at the beginning of the game, we have a full fleet of enemies here, so we'll skip this, we'll come back to this later. The next step, as you can see, is pilot actions. You're gonna be using these tokens that are available to you to take actions. So the first action we might wanna take is to fire lasers. We have a two and a one. Now obviously the object is to destroy the mothership, but different motherships have different rules. Like this one's protected. The mothership can't attack or be attacked until all enemies of the deck and the row have been defeated. So we won't even be able to, to start attacking this mothership, but it won't attack us until all the enemies are gone. So let's say I use my two laser token, I place it here. On this enemy, we'll see on the left side, how, you know, what lasers is needed to destroy this. This needs a two, and we did have a two. So if it was two or larger, we would have destroyed this specific enemy. And if we've destroyed this enemy, we will get the reward here. This is a laser one token. So we would take one of these laser one tokens from the tray, and we would place it directly into the bag. And keep in mind, any rewards you're getting from an enemy, all of the effects for these different icons are on page 21 of the rule book to refer to. And since we destroyed this enemy, it will go into a discard pile. And then this token will go into our discard token pool. And so that's just to the right of your board. And then here's our available token pool over here. Let's do another laser. We have one. We've stunned it. It's not going to hit us later. We'll show you how this works in just a little bit. Now let's say we wanted to maneuver. We would use this maneuver one token. Now let's say we wanted to place it here. Now we would look, this is a one. What we would need to, to evade this enemy is a two. It's not quite that. If it was a two, just like uh, when you had destroyed it with a laser, if you had evaded it with a maneuver, this car would get discarded and you would get this reward. It would go into the bag from the supply. And then this would go into your discard pile. Similar to when we destroyed the enemy with the laser. Same thing happens if you completely evade it with a maneuver. But in this case, we have not. But it is going to stun this enemy, which means it's not going to hit us. We'll show you more about that in just a moment. Now let's say we wanted to use this energy token. It's a value of two. We wanted to repair our shields. Let's say our shields are down to here. We could discard this token like this, and it's a value of two, but when you're repairing shields, you get twice that. So this would go up by four, but we would go up two and it's already at its max and you can never go higher than the max. However, instead of repairing the shields with this energy, let's say we wanted to buy a new token. So you look at the cost of these, one, two, three, two, three, four, two, three, three, all the way across. So that's how much it costs. We had two to spend. So let's say we wanted to buy uh, this maneuver here. I essentially would have discarded that token and I would take this token and I would place it directly into the bag. However, I could have discarded multiple energy tokens. Let's say I did multiples uh, and I had six to spend. I could buy two of these, for example. Or if I really wanted this and this, I could spend five, but I would not get change back. You could also use a token to activate a skill. In this case, this skill card requires one energy. So you could put as many tokens as needed to get to here. In this case, I more than suffice this. Then anytime in the future, including right after you place the token on there, I could put this in my discard pile, my discard token pool, to use this ability, which is choose one token from your pool and remove it from the game. That's sort of thinning out your sort of token pool there. And you gain one token from the supply. Pretty cool, but then you would exhaust this. You can only use these cards once per warp. Now, different cards require different things. This requires a maneuver instead of energy. Well, I have one. Let's just say I had one and go here. Uh, now, if you see that this has a red border, this means it has an ongoing effect. And so I place this here. When I decide to, I can trigger it. Now, to trigger an ongoing effect, instead of placing this in your discarded token pool, it's completely removed from the game. But of course, now this is an ongoing effect that will happen. And since it's ongoing, it stays like this and it doesn't get exhausted because it's an ongoing effect. 
Another action you take is one of your special power tokens. Now this one allows me to choose an enemy and just completely destroy that enemy, like this one, for example, and I would get the reward of gaining a one laser. However, the side effect of that Warhammer token means that other enemies cannot be stunned by lasers this turn. This one is being stunned, that's really gonna help me out later, so let's not use that power token this turn. Now all the rest of the power token effects are on the back of the rule book on page 24. So instead, I'll place this on my hold. Different uh, starfighters have different levels of hold, and this one can hold one. This will allow me to keep this token for next turn. That's great because I might have a better time to use it. Now after you're done with actions, we go to the third step of your turn, enemy attacks. We start from left to right, and that enemy is going to attack. Now this one has no tokens here, it was not stunned, so it will do damage, the amount of damage is seen here. It's just one, where this one has two, for example. So this one's gonna give us one damage. So we would reduce our shield by one to here. But let's say our shield was already at zero, then you would reduce your hull one. And in this case, we would lose the game because as soon as your hull gets down to zero, then you're done. So in this case, let's just say we were at the top here, it would reduce our shield by one. Also for each damage that your shield took, you must take one of your tokens in your discard pile and remove it from the game. So let's say we get rid of this one, that's once for each time your shield is damaged. And if you didn't have enough tokens to fully do this, you just remove as many as you can. Now this one finished attacking, now we go left to right here. Now this one was stunned. And because it was stunned, because we did at least one uh, laser damage to it, it will not attack us. But this goes on top, which means it's no longer stunned next turn, but it does have one damage done. It only needs three, so I only need to hit it with two next round to destroy it. This one, we evaded, we needed two, but it was one, so it stayed here. This was stunned because we were able to get out of its way, and so we will place this up here. It does not damage because we had it stunned, and now next turn we only need to put one more maneuver of a value of one in order to fully evade this and get the reward. Also keep in mind that different motherships will attack at different times, but as I showed you earlier, this one will not attack until all the enemies in the deck have been de depleted and the ones in the row. The next step is pilot plans. You're going to shake the bag to randomize it. You're going to draw five tokens out and place it into your token pool for this turn. These five will be in addition to anything that's in your hold. So let's say we were able to draw five tokens. Now let's look at that enemy arrivals, the first step of the turn. Now in this case, we have one empty spot, so we would simply refill it like this. You, if there are multiple empty slots, you would refill all of them from left to right. However, let's say during our pilot plan step, we were trying to fill up to five tokens and we ran out. We only had four. At that point, the warp is going to end. And in this case, you're going to pilot tokens, which means taking all of your tokens in play and placing them back in the bag. This includes any tokens in your token pool, any on skill cards. Now, any tokens in your hold remain. Also, any tokens in your discard pile get put in the bag. And any tokens assigned to enemies or motherships go back in the bag, which means if you run out of tokens before you've defeated these enemies, you've missed the timing of the best time to destroy them. Because you'll now also take all of the cards that are out in the row in the discard pile and you'll shuffle them together. And then you'll place them on top of the enemy pile again. Any exhausted skill cards would get refreshed face up again. But you'll get to draw two cards from the top, pick one to use, put it in front of you, and put the one you didn't choose in the bottom just like you did during setup. Then you're going to move the warp marker over one space. You'll then shake the bag, draw five new tokens, and you're ready to start the next warp. That's pretty much how you play the game. Remember, you have to defeat all three sections of the mothership before the end of the last warp, or before your hull gets down to zero. And when eventually hitting the mothership as you damage different sections, you'll be able to use these damage trackers to mark those. Now there's an optional book that comes with the game called Singularity. Now this book is a 27 page book with a lot of narrative and the backstory of what's going on and you'll read through it and you'll make certain decisions and these decisions will change the setup of the game. So it allows you to customize the game depending on the story and the way that you've you know, had the story navigate. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Warp's Edge. If you have further questions about the rules, I placed the link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them, since I'll be notified, but also so will Renegade Game Studios.